Welcome to Water Level. Today marks day three of the 2026 water year, and both Lake Powell and Lake Mead are starting the new year with significant changes in their water levels. Let's begin with Lake Powell, located in northern Arizona and southern Utah, where the latest reading, taken on Friday, October 3rd, 2025, shows an elevation of 3,544.50 feet. That's down 33.38 feet compared to the same time last year. Lake Powell now sits 155.5 feet below its full pool elevation of 3,700 feet, meaning the reservoir is currently at about 27.7% of its full capacity. By volume, that represents around 2.19 trillion gallons of water stored behind Glen Canyon Dam. Lake Powell's water level has seen gradual decline throughout the past 12 months, as shown in the graph. The reservoir held steady through the early months of last winter, but began a steady downward trend from January through early spring. The lowest levels were reached in late September, closing out the water year near 3,544 feet. The lake's depth at the dam is currently 412.5 feet, which gives an idea of how much storage remains before the minimum power pool would be approached. During the early days of the 2026 water year, inflows into Lake Powell total about 37,205 acre-feet. That's roughly 71% of the October average of 52,000 acre-feet. On the release side, Glen Canyon Dam has let out about 48,656 acre-feet so far this water year, which is just 0.65% of the minimum annual requirement of 7.5 million acre-feet. This means that, at least for now, outflows are exceeding inflows by roughly 11,400 acre-feet, leading to a small but measurable drop in storage since the start of the year. It's also worth noting that rivers feeding Lake Powell are running at about 64.5% of their October average flow, and the 34 upstream reservoirs that feed into the Colorado River system are collectively at 68.3% of capacity. That provides some regional stability, but Powell's level itself remains well below its multi-year averages. In simple terms, while water continues to flow into the lake, more is being released downstream than is coming in, which keeps the elevation trending slightly downward as the new water year begins. Comparing year to year, Lake Powell's elevation curve shows a distinct pattern. Over the past 12 months, the lake started near 3,578 feet in October of last year and gently declined through winter dipping below 3,560 feet by early spring. There was a modest rebound in late May and early June, likely due to late snowmelt and upstream releases, but that gain flattened out by midsummer. From July onward, the level declined again, reaching the current mark near 3,544 feet at the start of October. That consistent seasonal drop illustrates how outflows and evaporation outpace inflows during the hot months and how limited late-season recovery occurs once the runoff period ends. Shifting focus to Lake Mead, the story is a bit different this October. The latest reading for Friday, October 3rd, 2025, shows an elevation of 1,057.73 feet. That's down 6.12 feet compared to this time last year. But interestingly, Mead is now at its highest point of the current water year and sits 0.30 feet above its recent low. The reservoir remains 161.9 feet below its full pool elevation of 1,219.60 feet. In terms of capacity, Lake Mead is holding about 31.9% of its full volume, or roughly 25.9 million acre-feet, when completely full. The water level trend at Lake Mead over the past year paints a clear picture. Through last fall and early winter, the level hovered near 1,064 feet before dipping slightly in November. From mid-December onward, the lake began a gradual rise that continued into February, peaking just above 1,067 feet in late winter. After that, the level started to drop again, reaching a low point in July and August around 1,056 feet. 
Since then, however, there has been a small but noticeable recovery, lifting the level back above 1,057 feet as early October. Lake Mead's inflows for the start of water year 2026 total about 62,764 acre-feet. That's 131% of the typical October average of 47,852 acre-feet. That's a strong start to the year, suggesting that upstream releases from Lake Powell or regional tributaries are contributing to a slight rebound in Mead. Total outflows from Hoover Dam have been recorded at around 18,189 acre-feet so far this water year, which is only 0.2% of the minimum required annual release of 9 million acre-feet. This means that, at least for now, outflows are being kept low as the new year begins. For now, the rivers feeding Lake Mead are running at nearly 70% of their normal October flow, and inflows are slightly above last year's levels, about 108%, compared to water year 2025. Even so, the lake's overall storage has decreased by roughly 460,000 acre-feet since the start of the year, reflecting the combined effects of high demand, evaporation, and managed water transfers between Powell and Mead under existing Colorado River operations. Looking more broadly, both Lake Powell and Lake Mead continue to show the complex balancing act of the Colorado River system. Powell sits significantly lower than it did a year ago, while Mead is only moderately below last year's mark, but trending slightly upward in early October. Together, these two reservoirs hold the majority of the river's total storage, and their combined volumes give a good sense of the basin's overall condition. As we move further into the 2026 water year, attention will remain on the inflows from snowpack and river flows in the upper basin. For now, the numbers show Powell at 27.7% of capacity and Mead at 31.9%. That means together, the two are holding less than one-third of their combined potential storage. While inflows into Mead are relatively strong for October, Powell's releases continue to outpace its inputs, suggesting that downstream water deliveries are being prioritized in the early part of the season. In summary, Powell stands at 3,544.50 feet, down over 33 feet from last year, with about 412 feet of depth remaining at the dam. Mead, meanwhile, measures 1,057.73 feet, down just over 6 feet from a year ago, but slightly up from its recent low. Early inflow and release data suggest that both lakes are entering the new water year in relatively stable but low positions, awaiting stronger inflows later in the season. The graphs show a consistent pattern for both, gradual declines through summer, minor rebounds in winter or spring, and a leveling off as October begins. As we wrap up this report, both lakes remain vital indicators of the Colorado River system's health and the region's water availability. The first few days of the 2026 water year offer a detailed snapshot of where things stand right now. Lake Powell, running lean but steady, and Lake Mead, starting slightly stronger thanks to above-average early inflows. The coming months will determine whether these trends continue, stabilize, or reverse as the region transitions deeper into fall and winter. That's the current picture for both Lake Powell and Lake Mead as we begin the 2026 water year. Each day brings new data on inflows, releases, and elevation changes, and we'll continue to track every update. If you found this overview helpful, make sure to stay tuned for more detailed reports on water levels across the Southwest.